sluice on Lake Tuancheng in Beijing is the last one on the middle route of the south to north water diversion project. Here, the water from the Hanjiang River ends its long journey and begins a new mission. Once the middle route of the south to north water diversion project is fully operational, it will deliver 1.2 billion cubic meters of water to Beijing annually. The storage capacity of Lake Tuancheng is only 600,000 cubic meters. Evidently, it cannot hold all the water supplied by the project. Less than a kilometer to the west of Lake Tuancheng, a water control facility is being built. It will have the capacity to handle 1.27 million cubic meters of water. This will make it a major new source of clean water for Beijing. The water will come from both the South to North Water Diversion Project and Beijing's traditional water source, the Miyun Reservoir. Water that has come all the way from the south will be stored here and then supplied to thousands of homes in Beijing. The Sluice Gate is linked to Lake Kunming at the Summer Palace via a water conduit. History flows here. The water conduit connects the nation's past with its future. This imperial garden has witnessed numerous ups and downs in the course of its history. Two hundred and sixty years ago, Emperor Qianlong built a garden here called Qingyi with Longevity Hill as its heart. The garden was given a man-made lake, which he called Kunming. In 1856, an Anglo-French force set fire to Qingyi Garden, raising all the buildings in it to the ground. Empress Dowager Cixi, using money from the navy budget, had the summer palace rebuilt. While the Empress Dowager lived a life of luxury in the Summer Palace, in the 1894-95 Sino-Japanese War, China's northern fleet was destroyed. A line from a poem reads, Lotus flowers on the water remind visitors of the good times. The shimmering water of Lake Kunming has often inspired artists with dreams of prosperity and peace. Soon this body of water, which could once only be enjoyed by the imperial family, will be replenished with water from the Yangtze River. This addition of water will present both challenges and opportunities. June the 22nd, 2014, an announcement is made at the 38th session of the World Heritage Committee. The Grand Canal is to be included on the list of World Cultural Heritage Sites. For the past 1,400 years, the Grand Canal has been a key transport route and an important part of the irrigation and flood control efforts for the areas along it. It has also played a vital role in the unification of the Chinese nation, in China's economic prosperity, and in the integration of the nation's various ethnic cultures. In 1856, the Yellow River burst its banks. This led, ultimately, to the river changing course, cutting off the supply of water to the Grand Canal. The canal's northern section suffered a build-up of silt, rendering it no longer navigable. The once flourishing commercial cities along it, including Yangzhou, Huai'an, Jining, and Lianqing, went into decline. Now, the Grand Canal is being replenished with water from the South to North Water Diversion Project. Zhu 
Yongming has worked as a diver on the Beijing Hangzhou Grand Canal for over 20 years. The diving suit weighs nearly 70 kilos. Zhu Yongming wears it to work on the Grand Canal for more than 20 days every three months. The sluices on the Grand Canal are in need of constant repair. Along its course, the canal experiences a vertical drop of over 30 meters. If the sluices aren't operating normally, water from the canal will flow back to the Yangtze. In other words, the water from the south will not reach its destination in the north. This is Winter 2012. A project to divert water and improve navigation on the Grand Canal is underway outside the city of Jining in Shandong province. The project extends over a distance of 108 kilometers. Its purpose is to make the section of the Grand Canal from South Four Lakes to East Pinghu Lake navigable again. <laughs> Lianyungang is the eastern starting point of the Eurasian Continental Bridge. Although the city lies on the sea, Per capita potable water is only 380 cubic meters. This is significantly less than the national average. For many years, Lianyungang had been short of fresh water. But in the 1960s, the city began getting drinking water from the Yangtze. The Yangtze River Water Northward Diversion Project draws water from the Yangtze at the Jiangdu Water Control Center. The water is sent through nine pumping stations to form a vast water supply network with the Yellow Sea to the east, the Yangtze River to the south, the Huaihe River near the city of Bangbu to the west, and South Four Lakes to the north. This huge water network brought to an end the history of unpredictable floods and droughts in Jiangsu province. It keeps over two million acres of paddy fields amply supplied with water. Now, in the northern part of Jiangsu province, two crops, rice and wheat, are harvested every year and the grain output has increased significantly. The Northwood Water Diversion Project in Jiangsu Province was completed 30 years ago. The eastern route of the South to North Water Diversion Project takes water further north over an extended distance of 1,156 kilometers. The original nine pumping stations have been increased to 13 and the water level has been lifted by nearly 40 meters, higher than a 13-story apartment building. This main water supply route runs through Jiangsu province and joins the main channel for supplying water from the Yangtze River to the north. 
The new water supply system covers six municipalities and 24 counties and districts within the province. It lifts up to 15.7 billion cubic meters of water from the Yangtze every year. Over 80% of this water is consumed in an area of 63,000 square kilometers, with a population of more than 39 million. The beautiful city of Weihai lies on the Bohai Gulf. The subject of China's water resources was included in middle school geography textbooks 10 years ago. It's something that particularly interests the students at Gu Jai Middle School in Weihai. The per capita water resources in this modern city are 540 cubic meters. This is scarcely above the internationally recognized extreme shortage limit of 500 cubic meters. Weihai is not the only city on the Jiaodong Peninsula that is seriously short of fresh water. Qingdao and Yantai are facing the same problem. The project to divert water from the Yellow River to Qingdao was completed in 1989. To date, the city has been supplied with over 3 billion cubic meters of Yellow River water. Even so, it is facing a growing freshwater shortage. In 2014, rainfall in Qingdao was unusually low. In 2013, the water table had fallen by one and a half meters. The city faces a water shortage of nearly 380,000 cubic meters. Per capita water resources in the coast city of Yantai are only 436 cubic meters, 60 cubic meters below the internationally recognized danger point of 500 cubic meters. The city obtains 70% of its water for domestic use from the Yellow River. The cities of Qingdao, Yantai, Weihai, Weifang, Ruzhao, and Binzhou are the most economically developed in Shandong province. They have been jointly designated by the central government as the Blue Economic Zone on the Shandong Peninsula. In 2013, the total output value of the Shandong Peninsula Blue Economic Zone was 20,360 million yuan, almost half of the total of the whole of Shandong province. The water shortage is a serious impediment to economic development. Fresh water is vital for development. In 1997, the Yellow River began to dry up. This sounded a serious warning to people living in the nearby cities. The main supply channel for the 487 kilometer long eastern route of the south to north diversion project does not pass through the Jiaodong and Qingdao areas. So, a 704 kilometer long branch channel was built to supply water from the route to these areas further east. This water network makes it possible to supply water from the south to the north and for water to be exchanged when needed between east and west. It carries water from the Yangtze to 13 municipalities and 68 counties in Shandong province.
水利工程和现代的水利工程啊结合起来，啊，无论是在这个工程上，啊，在经济上，还是在社会上、文化上，包括旅游景观上，啊，都是这个一个创新，一个壮举。Liu Xuexin is in his late sixties. For many years, he worked at Tanggu Port. His hobby is building model ships. He makes them from memory, and each one tells a story about the sea. The old man has lived by water all his life, but now his city is facing a serious water shortage. That time, there was another saying, "That is, this water can't be wasted. It's going to be wasted." It's going to be wasted. 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 井水了，可是井水呢？这个、倒霉地区的马苗含活量高，所以说这个地区人喝完这个井水以后哈，都喜欢树芽，喜欢树芽，这都是麦芽嘛，这大棒子儿芽，就黄啊，骨质还发脆。Several rivers meet in Tianjin. Yet per capita freshwater resources are only 160 cubic meters, just one third of the national average, and also a third of the internationally recognized minimum for survival. The Binhai New District of Tianjin is known as China's third economic growth point. Located at the midpoint of the Bohai Economic Rim, the district has abundant natural resources, including gas, marine products, and geothermal energy. It also boasts a number of well-known international enterprises in the fields of high technology, manufacturing, aerospace, and port industries. The district's total output value in 2013 exceeded 800 billion yuan, more than half the figure for the whole of Tianjin. However, the development of the Binhai New District is being hindered by a serious shortage of water. More than 70% of Tianjin's surface water is tapped for daily use, far higher than the internationally recognized limit of 40%. The water crisis is the most pressing, most direct and most important issue facing Tianjin if it wants to sustain its development. Construction of part of the middle route of the south to north water diversion project has now been completed. In total, 1,015 million cubic meters of water will be diverted from the Danjiangkou Reservoir to Tianjin. Water from the project's eastern route will supply the city with an additional 1.5 billion cubic meters of water every year. Although the water from the Yangtze River is not enough to quench Tianjin's thirst, it is a major support for the city in sustaining its development. This river is connected to the river. Tianjin can absorb some of the water and the water water. Its water water and the water water have also been improved. This water 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 can be used 它就会实行一个什么呢？叫采补平衡。所以，我想这个几个方面对天津都是非常有利的。Hubei Province has plenty of water, thanks to a series of water control projects here. Transport, power generation, and irrigation have picked up their development speed. 
More than three million tourists a year come to Yichang to visit the Three Gorges on the Yangtze and the Three Gorges Dam. The city's annual income from tourism exceeds 20 billion yuan. Tourism is becoming Yichang's mainstay industry. A billboard stands in front of the West Railway Station in Beijing. It reads, Danjiang Kou, water capital of China. Yi Chang's success inspired people in Danjiang Kou to develop their city into a water-based tourist destination. In the city of Danjiang Kou, Yuan Guodong is making his dream come true. Yuan Guodong is not the only one to have had his life changed by the Danjiang Kou Dam. After it was heightened, the water surface in the reservoir expanded to 1,022 square kilometers. The city of Danjiang Kou, the starting point of the South to North Water Diversion Project, has become more charming and is attracting more tourists. We are in the 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 一顾清水永续北宋我们承担着光荣的任务Lush mountains and clean waters are priceless natural resources and a potential source of wealth. So Henan Province's per capita water resources rank 22nd in China. Henan was the first region on the Central Plains to receive water from the South to North Water Diversion Project. The 731 kilometer long middle route, as it runs through Henan, brings the province nearly 3.8 billion cubic meters of water, equivalent to one third of the quantity stored in the Xiao Langdi Reservoir on the Yellow River. The 40 outlets along the main route serve 11 cities and 34 counties. The diverted water will benefit nearly 20 million people living locally. After 
这个沿线的生态环境。Nai Xinjian and his team are working on a special project in Xintai, Hebei Province. They are restoring the scenic attraction at Bai Quan, or 100 Springs. Bai Quan Bai Quan was in the 60s and 70s. At that time, it was a river that was everywhere. That the leader of the leader of the leader 水深大概有六米，有五三千亩水稻，这个郁郁葱葱。这个平时这个灌了是三十几个村儿，这个五八年扩建以后，咱一直到白乡、宁津、龙窑这一片，有二十一万亩的灌溉面积。但现在这个这个水位已经到了地下二十八米，所以近期我们这个市委市政府采取了叫。这个水生态修复。邢台 is one of many areas in Hebei Province that is badly in need of water. The province has been suffering from droughts every year since the 1980s. The per capita water resources here are just one seventh of the national average. Every year, the groundwater is overexploited by five billion cubic meters. This has created 21 underground funnels with a total area of 40,000 square kilometers. The water table beneath the eastern Hebei plains has fallen 60 meters, equivalent to the height of a 20-story building. It's 2012, and Xingtai launches a project to restore the local ecosystem. More than 170 wells are being sealed, reducing groundwater usage by more than 20 million cubic meters. As a result, the water table in the urban area rises quickly. The South and North Water Diversion Project delivers more than 3 billion cubic meters of water to Henan every year. The province is a major grain producer, but its agricultural sector was on the brink of collapse. It has been saved by the South and North Water Diversion Project. 南水北调通水后呢，我们河北省这个可以稳定的用长江水每年三十亿方，覆盖呢七个河北的社区市，九十二个县，对我们置换、调整城镇和工业用水，这个有利于啊把我们的经济结构、地区结构啊把它调整好。使得我们的经济呢可持续发展。二十五号上午，习近平首先来到北京市规划展览馆考察。习近平强调，首都规划务必坚持以人为本，坚持可持续发展，坚持一切从实际出发，贯通历史现状未来，统筹人口资源环境，让历史文化与自然生态永续利用与现代化建设交相辉映。二零零四年到二零二零年的总体规划当中，人口确定呢是一千八百万人，但是我们到一三年的年底的时候，已经达到了两千一百一十四点二万人。我们的就是水资源的承载力是只到两千三百万人。The models show how Beijing will look in the future. Water is the key factor if Beijing is to convert this grand plan into reality and maintain the vigor of its development. At present, per capita water resources are less than 100 cubic meters, considerably below the internationally recognized danger level of 500 cubic meters. With its completion, the middle route of the South to North Water Diversion Project will deliver 1.2 billion cubic meters of water from the Yangtze River to the water supply networks in various cities. Beijing currently has a population of over 20 million. Keeping so many people supplied with water is a matter of strategic importance. 南水北调工程的实施，对于从根本上缓解北京用水的紧张状况，全方位的改善首都生态环境
，在更高的水平上推动首都可持续发展，具有重大的意义。千里调水来之不易，为把清水送往北京，水源地及沿线人民啊，做出了巨大的牺牲。饱含着对首都的深情厚谊，凝聚着广大建设者的无私奉献。饮水思源，情真意切，倍加珍惜。The South North Water Diversion Project brings priceless water to the thirsty areas of the North. In the larger cities, such as Beijing, people are becoming used to saving water and using it carefully. Young people are feeling so happy and so happy that they want to use it in the big cities. In the Huawei city, we are going to use it. That's far too far. That's not possible. Jian Zhengcheng is a sixth grade student at Xishi Ku Primary School in Beijing's Xicheng District. In 2000, he conducted an investigation into the car washes in Xicheng district. That was a six year old, six year old, and then I joined a community organization. After the year of the year, I wrote a paper about the water and the water. Jin Zhengcheng discovered that there were more than 600 car washes in Xicheng district alone. They consumed 1.3 million tons of water every year. They consumed 1.3 million tons of water every year. They consumed 1.3 million tons of water every year. This was equivalent to two and a half times the amount in Beijing's Lake Shichahai. The figure for car ownership in the whole of Beijing was two million. The water used for washing them was equivalent to that contained in Lake Kunming at the Summer Palace. Fourteen years have passed. In 2012, Jin Zhengcheng bought his own car. By the end of 2013, the number of cars in Beijing exceeded 5.4 million, nearly three times the figure in 2000. Now there are more than 20,000 car washes in Beijing, and one can only imagine the amount of water they must be consuming. Now, what is the situation of the car washing? I have not done a detailed survey, but there are some car washing that are using the recycling system. 我们这套设备啊，是中国水的循环，洗完车的水啊，污脏水集中到这个池子里，倒流到这个蓄水坑，通过那个潜水泵抽到后边循环机里边。这个节水跟以往的节水不一样，因为以往的循环水的设备是沉降式的，这套设备啊，是它生物降解，生物降解呢，它这个损水的损耗比较小，洗一辆车大约损耗在两升两三升水。For China's fast-expanding cities, saving water is vital. One thousand five hundred families live in the Zhuangsheng area of Beijing's Xicheng district. People here collect all the water they've used for bathing and washing, treat it, and then use it to flush the toilets and water the grass in their compounds. In this way, they save at least 5,000 cubic meters of water a month. In May 2011, the Beijing municipal government issued an instruction. All newly built residential compounds with an area of 50,000 square meters or more and daily water use upwards of 150 tons must be equipped with water recycling facilities. The wastewater is thoroughly treated until it has reached the required standard. It's known as reclaimed or intermediate water because it's not suitable for drinking but is cleaner than wastewater. Serious water shortages are affecting an increasing number of countries. Reclaimed water, as an important water source, can be used not only for irrigation but also for improving the natural environment. 不要认为这个水资源从拿拿水源来了以后，我们这个受水区的人就可以，这是呃随便乱用，不能浪费。所以一定要从每一滴水，爱护每一滴水，节约每一滴水做起。
In February 2014, the State Council issued new regulations on the management of water supplied by the South and North Water Diversion Project. The new regulations contain specific requirements for water supply and quality control and the protection of the project's facilities. The stipulations are designed so that the water can be distributed rationally, its quality can be guaranteed and supplies can be safeguarded. was held in the French coastal city of Marseille. For the first time, China was participating in this major international gathering in the capacity of a member of the World Water Council. M. Wali is a young woman from the Republic of Mali, a West African country that suffers from a serious shortage of water. She describes the feeling of extreme thirst. She says, the thirst I feel is not the thirst you feel after a big dinner. It is the feeling you get after waiting to get water from the well for three hours under the scorching sun. When the water is lifted from the well, I feel so thirsty it's as if my throat is burning with fire. We have to wait for the whole dry season before we receive the first rainfall. We drink the water from muddy pools. It's so dirty I feel sick when I think about it. The dry season lasts for several months. Many of our animals die from thirst. The anxiety is torment. The issue of water resources is vital to the development and survival of humankind. Ensuring the universal right to the use of water and safeguarding water resources are challenges facing the whole world. China is a developing country with one quarter of the world's population. It's building the South to North Water Diversion Project to safeguard its water resources and to maintain the sustainability of its development. I would say the South North Water Project is a good example how to deal with water problems. China's future economic and social development is still facing a challenge from water shortages. The country enforces strict administration of its water resources and promotes the development of a water-saving society in order to make sustained use of its water and guarantee sustainable economic development. The Dongzhuang Shizhuan 
实现这个优化配置，把我们这工程修建成为一个对国家来讲具有战略性的这样一个基础设施。In July 2012, a team from the Yellow River Water Commission returned to the Qinghai Tibet Plateau. They are conducting a further study of the source of the Yangtze and Yellow Rivers. The work of surveying, planning, designing, and assessing the feasibility of the western routes of the South to North Water Diversion Project has been going on for 60 years. A blueprint in which water from the Yangtze River will be diverted to the north is being finalized. While the western route is still on the design board, water diversion projects have already been completed to link the waters in the valleys of the Yangtze, Huaihe, Yellow, and Haihe rivers. The project involves a major readjustment of China's water resources. The water is being made to flow in the most rational way human ingenuity can devise and implement. It is a contribution by China to safeguarding the Earth for humankind and to making rational, fair, and safe use of the world's water resources. June 2014, President Xi Jinping tells the International Conference on Material Science and Engineering Technology that during the three decades of reform and opening, China has carried out a large number of key projects. These include the South to North water diversion and high-speed railways projects. These have helped China significantly raise its ability to improve its infrastructure, develop its manufacturing and new emerging industries, and accelerate its modernization. The first blueprint for the South to North water diversion project contained only a few simple marks. With time, it became more detailed and was eventually put into practice. The South to North Water Diversion Project is the largest water diversion project ever carried out anywhere in the world. It represents a new chapter in China's history of flood control and water conservation. All those who have participated in the construction of this historic project feel proud of their efforts. The greatest water control network in the largest country in the East will be the focus of world attention for years to come. Six decades are a fleeting time in China's 5,000-year-long history, but the significance of time cannot be measured by length. The construction of the South to North Water Diversion Project is a record of an unforgettable period when concept became reality, when China fulfilled a great dream. On the broad Yangtze, a ship is forging ahead, carrying with it. The great aspirations of the Chinese nation.